Praise the Lord. Would you stand for a moment? I think you ought to just take a moment. I like to do this. And just everybody lift your hands and give God glory. Come on, raise your voice and give Him glory. We live in a place where we can glorify God freely. Hallelujah. We have the opera. We come to a church that glorifies God. Come on, somebody. We have the opportunity to lift Him up, lift our voice. Come on, lift our hearts. Hallelujah. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and tell him, my God is faithful. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Glory to God. God is good. Amen. And uh, I, I want to, to thank the pastors of our church for the opportunity to speak. I uh, don't take it lightly. I, I am appreciative uh, of them and, and all that they have sown into us. Amen. Can I get a good amen for that? We have some of the best teachers that you'll find on planet earth. Amen. And uh, we're just so thankful for them and, and for all that they impart. And uh, uh, I, I am so thankful for my wife who is the rock and the anchor. Amen. So uh, she is, is a blessing to me. And uh, even when I haven't been necessarily maybe a blessing to her. Amen. But uh, she is a blessing and I'm so thankful for her. Tonight, and I, I want to share something that during worship, uh, the Lord had had just began to deal with me about, and I believe that before we leave here tonight, that some of you are going to recognize that a new season has already begun in your life. But I, I I find it necessary to say this because we many times misunderstand or we don't properly grab hold of something. And that is this, a new season doesn't start with the dawning of a day. A new day starts at midnight. And so sometimes because we still see the darkness, we think that a new season hasn't arrived. But the new season has already arrived and the new season has already begun. And it's just we're walking out the remaining darkness before light dawns. But I want you to know that some of you may be still walking through some darkness. But let me tell you, there's a promise. God has given us a promise. And that promise is that everything in that word is mine. I've got a covenant with God. And I serve a covenant keeping God. And anything that God has cut covenant with me on, let me tell you something. God will fulfill his part. Come on, are you listening to me tonight? And so if that's you tonight, I want you, before you leave here tonight, I want you to grab hold of that with your heart. Hear it with your heart, not your natural ears. Come on, because you've got to grab hold of it and latch on to something. God is changing things, and God is moving in great ways. And God is up to something good. I believe that. We heard that last night, and if you weren't here, you, you need to know that God is doing something right now. There is a flow of God right now. We're not trying to get a flow of God. We're trying to get in the flow of God. Come on, somebody. God's already moving. God's already flowing. There's already a move of the Spirit that's taking place. We need to get in. We need to step in, get in, stay in. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So uh, uh, with that, with that I, I, you know, I feel like uh, I should roll up my sleeves and let's go to work. Amen. What are we doing? We're going to go dig out a mystery. We want to dig out. We want to dig something out of the word. It's not something that's never been spoken. It might be revelation for you. It might be something God has just for you. So uh, tonight, I want to, to say this, and, and I want you to be turning over to Isaiah, if you will. Chapter number 40. And, and so as you're turning there, I'll say this. Um, I believe that, that God has, is, uh, the heavens are opening for, uh, for the church. And there are things that God is releasing into the body of Christ. There are things that God is doing in this hour that we need to take notice of. Be mindful of. Amen. Because all we hear about, how many of you would agree, we hear so much about darkness. 
Come on, we hear it from the church. We hear it from the world. We hear about darkness. We hear about murders and killings. We hear about robbings. We hear uh, about drugs and we hear about abandonment and we hear about all of these other things. But I came to give you good news tonight that God is moving and that God is alive and there are things that are being released out of heaven tonight that we're going to grab hold of. We're going to latch hold of and then we're going to begin to experience in a new way. And we're going to walk in in a new way. So Isaiah chapter 40 and go down to verse 28 and the Bible says this. It says, hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard? Come on somebody, look at your neighbor and say, have you heard? Have you heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he faints not and is not weary. Come on, somebody, if you, we could stop right there and close this service, that's the revelation that we need right there. The God that we are serving is, does not faint. He does not grow weary. He is everlasting. That means He is Abba. That means He's Alpha. That means He's Omega. That means He's the beginning. It means He's the end. It means He was there before your trouble started and He'll be here after it is gone. It means that He's your healer. It means He's your deliverer. It means He's your strong tower. It means that He's your ever-present help in times of trouble. It means that He is there, my shield, my buckler. He is strong. He is mighty. He is everlasting. Sting. He is never growing weary. He never leaves me. He never forsakes me. He is always closer to me than a brother. He is in me, yet he is with me. He's around me, yet he is on the inside of me. Dwelling, living, leading, guiding. Come on. Being my tour guide in life. Showing me the way of victory. Showing me the pathway of righteousness. Showing me how to overcome. Showing me how to live in victory. Showing me how to prosper. Showing me how to walk in hell. Showing me how to to have joy, showing me the peace of God, showing me that I can win in every situation, showing me that I'm never under, but I, I'm always over. I'm never the tail because I'm always the head. I am living for the everlasting one. I am living with the one who grows, never grows weary, and he is here and he is with me. He's already gone before me and he's prepared a way for me so that I will not have to fail. We could stop this service with that revelation alone and say, my God is good. My God is able. My God is for me. My God is never against me. He is the everlasting one. Hast thou not known? Come on, believer. We got to know a thing. Come on, child of God. We got to come to the place where we know a thing. It's not that you've heard a thing. you got to know a thing. See, I got to, my daddy used to say, I got to know in my knower. Come on, I got to get that revelation deep down on the inside of me. I need to know a thing. Come on, I don't want to hear church doctrine. And I don't want to hear about what somebody believes. I want to get a hold of the word. I want to get a hold of the scripture. I want to get a hold of the truth. I want to stand on the foundation, the rock of ages. And I want to stand there. And I want to wrap my life around it and say, I know. Hast thou not known? Yes, I do. Talk to me, Isaiah. Hast thou not heard, yes I have, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not. He does not grow weary. There is no searching of his understanding. The greatest minds that have ever studied the word of God have not found the end of his understanding or his knowledge or revelation. They're still reaching and digging. And as they dig, they're still finding that the, the human mind cannot comprehend because his ways are higher than my ways and his thoughts are higher than my thoughts. And God is still building and establishing and sowing and releasing. So he said, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator. See, I just like reading that. Is that okay? 
Come on, we got, I, I like hearing that. Look at verse 29 though. He giveth what? Power. He giveth what? Power. He giveth power to the faint. Oh my God. When you wake up in the morning and you say, I don't know how I'm going to make it another day. Then you need to come right back here to verse 29 and say, my God, the everlasting one, the one that never faints and the one that never grows weary. He gives power to the faint and to them that have no might. He will increase your strength. So in the darkest days of your life, you you have a word from God that he'll show up on the scene and he'll give power to the faint. And he'll he'll give might and strength to those who are struggling and weary what a promise he said I'll give you power when you feel like you're gonna faint oh my goodness and he said I when you don't feel like you can make another day When you don't feel like your foot can take another step. When you feel like the weight of life is just getting too heavy to bear. He said, oh, no, no, no. I'm going to come alongside of you. Because the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead now dwells on the inside of my mortal body. And he said, I'll come along and I'm going to give you strength in your time of trouble. I'm going to give you strength in your time of struggle. I'm going to give you strength when the enemy comes. I'm going to give you strength when you don't think you can make another day and I'm going to see you through to the finish he said he goes on and he says even the youths shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall all that means is that you know even those young bucks they like to run around with their shirt off all muscular and stuff That even those young bucks that rely on their own strength shall fall. Those that rely on their own power will fail. Come on. Those that rely on the arm of the flesh shall surely fail. Come on, are you following me now? Because see, God's trying to get me somewhere. God's trying to get me off of my flesh. Get me off of myself. Get me off of my ability. Get me off of my talent. Get me off of my gifting even so that I will not rely. Come on, somebody. See, there's a lot of people. Listen to this. Hear me now. There's a lot of people that rely on their gifting, not the anointing. And there's a whole lot of people that are trying to run around because they've been gifted and trying to survive there, not leaning back and saying wait a minute the gifting has no value without the anointing because you can preach a thing but if there ain't no anointing on it it's like eating crackers how come on now with no drink of water See, because it ain't about your preaching ability. It ain't about my preaching ability. If there ain't no anointing on it, then there won't be the substance. That tangible anointing, that tangible presence that we heard Brother Jerry talk about last night. See, without the anointing, there won't be that tangible presence of the Holy Ghost that's backing that thing up. And then we're talent-driven. Gift-driven. I thank God for gifts and talents, but I need the anointing to make it successful. Come on, are you following me? So what it's telling us there, it's not prophesying that the young men are going to fail. It's just telling us that even the strongest of, of you and the youngest and the most, those with the most vitality, that if they do it in their own strength, it's just telling us that they will fall. Because, see, he's trying to get us now. Come on. Here's where we're going. He's trying to get us to verse 30. 31, I mean. But they that wait. Hope in. Put their trust in. The Lord. They'll do what? Renew. Their what? Strength. Ah. Ah. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Come on, are you following me? Now, come on, in the Bible, the the eagle represents, it it, it represents strength and protection. So we, we got, he said, they shall mount up with wings as an eagle. 
they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk, and they will not faint. See, he's trying to get me there because, see, he wants me to wait on him. He doesn't want me in verse 30. Come on. He doesn't want me to stop in verse 30 where I'm relying on talent and strength of my own. He's wanting me to get on over here to verse, uh, verse 31 because, see, this is where my answer lies. This is my revelation. This is the word that I got to get on the inside of me because right there at the beginning he says, you got to wait. Wait on what? Wait on me. Why? Because I'm the one that gives you strength. I'm the one that comes alongside of you when you faint. And I empower you to succeed. So you can't go alone. Do you remember what he told David? David said, shall I go up? You remember that? And he said, I want you to wait till you hear what? A sound. Don't go up till you hear a sound in the top of the mulberry bushes. Why? Because you can't do it on your own, David. David, you're a skilled fighter. You're a skilled warrior. Remember the saying? Saul has killed his thousands. David has killed his ten thousands. Come on, David was a skilled warrior. But he said, even you, David, need to wait on me. Because no matter how skilled you are and no matter how good you may be with a sling or a sword or a bow and arrow or a javelin, whatever it is that you use, you're not skilled enough to not wait. You see, we got to get to the place where we understand that there is no place in this walk that I will ever get to where I can go ahead. I got to come to the revelation that I need to wait on him. How many of you would agree waiting is not the 2019 strong suit of people? Now, now my daddy used to say, if that shoe don't fit, don't put it on. Some of you may have the patience of Job. But let me say this. Sometimes that's borne out at the McDonald's drive-thru. At the checkout counter at H-E-B. When you're tapping your foot. God, my God. <laughs> See, we, 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 patience is not, that's why, that's why when your internet ain't moving fast enough on your phone. You, you call in Time Warner or whoever your service provider is, and you're like, I don't understand why my phone won't download this video. Patience is not our, it, it doesn't tend to be our strong thing because we've gotten used to quick, fast, and in a hurry. And if we're not careful, we bring that attitude of quick, fast, and in a hurry into the church. And we bring it, we come on, we bring it into the body of Christ, and we say, God, I needed it yesterday, and I don't understand why you didn't show up. God, I needed it today. I needed it this morning. I needed it whenever. And I don't understand why you're not here yet. And God is saying, wait. Because I got a far better thing for you. See, because you have an expected end and then God has one. And God's expected end is always better than yours. And if I learn how to wait, then I'll get God's expected end and not mine. See, my expected end is just to get my bills paid. God's expected end is for me to have this month's and next month's paid and still have money in the bank. Come on, somebody. See, we got to get onto a higher plane. We got to come up higher in our thinking and in our understanding. We thought too low. And we set our expectations too low. I've told kids over the years, I've told them, listen, if you shoot for the stars and you land on the moon, you've accomplished a great thing. And I've told parents, don't set your kids' expectations so low. Don't, 
bring them up higher. Give them something to aim at. But, but how many of you would agree? That's true for us as well as believers. Because we haven't learned how to wait on God and wait on what God wants to do and wait on God's miracle and wait on God's deliverance and wait on God's victory. And, and we've got to learn how to wait. They that wait upon the Lord, you're going to renew your strength. When many times what we're looking for is relief. I'm not looking for strength. I'm looking for relief. Relief from the pressure. Boy, it got quiet in here. Now you were shouting real good earlier. See, see, I, I need his strength. Now what I don't understand, what I need to understand is where he is, his peace is there. But I'm looking for my own, if I'm looking for my own uh, definition of peace, I might miss something greater. They that wait upon the Lord shall what? Renew their strength, mount up with wings as what? Eagles. They shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. Everybody all right? Now listen to this. I, I, I started as I was thinking about this. I started doing a little research on the eagles. And, and I'm going to give you a couple things very quickly. And then I'm going I'm to make some points. And then we're going we're gonna to try to bring something out. Uh, an eagle, listen to this. A, uh, an eagle only weighs approximately 10 pounds. Now this is crazy to me because you see the pictures of eagles. And they're so big. And they got them four and five foot wingspans, but most of them only weigh around 10 pounds. But even though they're only about 10 pounds, if you look at it, if you, if you read about them, what you'll find is the size of their eyes are almost the same size as a human eye. Even though they only weigh about 10 pounds. But from 10, they, and, and, and get ahead and then come back, they... Uh, can soar at like 10,000 feet. And from that place, 10,000, or, or as much as three to four miles away, they can see a rabbit running through the grass. Now, watch this. See, I want to mount up with wings as eagles. So he's, he's making this reference to eagles. So then how many of us have ever stopped to understand what the eagle, some things about the eagle so we can understand and keep the reference in the context? See, the eagle has sight and can see beyond, can see further. He can look out there and see something way out. In the distance. You see, when I learn how to wait on the Lord, see, He'll He'll teach me, He'll He'll begin to help me see beyond. He'll help me see beyond the trouble. He'll help me see beyond the problem. He'll help me see out into the future. He'll help me see out beyond any limitations that I might have. He'll help me see beyond my job and its paycheck. He'll help me see beyond that sickness and that disease. He'll help me see beyond that offense and that hurt. He'll help me see beyond that division or that strife. He'll help me see beyond anything the adversary is trying to do in my life. Because he'll begin to fine tune my sight, my spiritual sight, until the point where I can see and I can begin to pinpoint something that's way out in the distance called vision. And as he begins to give me vision, I can see out there and I can see something glorious and I can see something marvelous and I can see something powerful that is on the horizon and I'll be able to spot it from a long ways away and I'll set my gaze on that thing and I'll set my heart on that thing and I'll begin to focus in on it and say that's where God's taking me okay God now I see I see where we're going with this thing I see where you're taking me in this moment I see what I'm walking through and the thing that I need to learn I can see. 
see the more I learn to wait on God, then I can begin to see. He can begin to give me vision like an eagle to where I can see out beyond. See, we, the devil wants to keep us right here. Rents due. Body hurts. Heart is broken. See, he wants to keep me nearsighted. See, he don't want me to have vision. He doesn't want me to see out beyond where I am. He just wants me to focus and concentrate my efforts right here. When we used to coach basketball, one of the things that we would tell him all the time is when that guy would get ready to shoot, get your hand out there and get your hand in his face. I won't put my hand in his face. And we would say, put your hand in his face. Why? Because we don't want him to see the target. We don't want him to be able to see what he's aiming at. The devil don't want you to see what God's got you aiming at. So he creates distractions and turmoil all around you because he wants to make you nearsighted. He wants to keep your vision close so that you can't see a thing. See, God's already, I heard Pastor Parsley say this. I'll just inject this. And if you say, well, that don't have nothing to do with it, it's still good anyways. He said, isn't it amazing? God took six days to build the world and he, he's been gone for 2,000, Jesus has been gone for 2,000 years building me a place. I don't know if that fits, but I like it. So, so we want to get, we want to wait on God because he'll increase our ability to see. To see things in the word, see things in the spirit, see things he's predestined us for, see things that he's already begun, the work that has already been begun that we're moving towards. He, if we stay and wait on him, he can begin to give us vision. Let me say this. Eagles can fly. They did a study on a group of eagles. And this, this certain group of eagles that they did a study on, they would, they would watch their patterns. And they could fly up to 225 miles in a day at one time. At one time, without landing. 225. And 20, there's a lot of us can't ride in a car 225 miles without stopping to the bathroom, a cup of coffee, and a donut. Come on, somebody. Can I get an amen right there? Hallelujah, because I'm guilty. I'm a cup of coffee and a donut guy. I may not have to go to the bathroom, but hey, I sure can't eat. But anyway, that's a different story. Now, and I look like I can eat. But anyway, and, and they, could, they could fly as up to 225 miles at one time. And I began to think about that. When I learn how to wait on God, He gives me endurance to run the race. When I wait on God, He develops and He establishes an endurance in me to run my race. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. I'm not here to run 100 yards and fall flat and faint. I'm here to see this thing through to the end. Come on, I'm here to see it all the way to the finish. I'm going to run till I either, one, get raptured or died and go, go, die and go to be with God. But either way, I'm going to run my race for however many years that I am on this people planet. And I'm going to see this thing through. Endurance. God will give you endurance. To endure what comes your way, but also to endure the journey. Now, please don't misunderstand the word endure, because some people take that in a negative context and say, well, I'm just enduring. That's not what I meant. I meant the stamina and the strength to run my race to the best of my ability and to accomplish the plan of God and to finish the work that he has given me to finish and to do. Come on, somebody. So if I'll wait on God and I'll learn how to wait, he'll give me endurance. Come on, I told someone one time years ago, 
they were involved in everything. Man, they were, they were doing this and doing that and doing the other thing. And they were an usher and they were a, a teacher and they were a bathroom cleaner and a grass mower and a, and a this and that and the other thing. And I said, you know what? It, you know, I appreciate all the effort. I said, but you know what? It's not, you know, it's not good if you're the brightest star in the sky, but yet you're the first one to burn out. I need you for the long haul. I need you for, from start to finish. I need you till this thing is over. That's endurance. To run the race. Come on. Are you with me? We need endurance. We need to be able to finish. Now listen, finish. Let me, let me inject this thought. I want to finish at the same pace I'm running, at the same pace I'm running or faster. I don't want to endure and slow down as I get old. Because I can still read where Moses' natural forces were not abated when he was old. He was 120 years old and could see and fight and do everything he had ever done. I want to finish my race strong. I want to be running just as strong in my 70s as I am in my 40s. Come on, I want to run. And I want to run strong. And I want to run and endure. And I want to make it to the end. Eagles, listen to this. Eagles don't hang with other kinds of birds. Eagles hang with eagles, or they hang out alone. But they don't hang with other kinds of birds. Now, there's a lesson here, and I'm not going to dwell on this very much. But the company you keep Listen, eagles don't hang out with turkeys Because turkeys get served up for Thanksgiving Now we laugh But there's a whole lot of people hanging around with some turkeys And they don't understand why they're not soaring And they can't understand why they're not soaring high. And now, now I, I'm going to throw this out there. I don't know how many teenagers are in here, but I, I especially would like you to hear that. Watch who your company you're keeping. Watch the company you keep. Because it's important that you know who you're around and you know what they're about. It's just as important for me as an adult. Now, that doesn't mean... Now, listen... That doesn't mean the eagles go around preying on the other birds. They just don't hang with them. Some of you that just run over. See, they're not predators in that way. They just don't hang with them. Listen, I can love you. I can love people. But there's some people I don't want sowing into my life. There are people I don't want sowing into my heart. Because I'm guarding my heart because I got a race to run. Come on. Now I'll leave that right there. But it is important that we understand that we don't want just anybody and everybody. This is why I tell people, be careful who you ask counsel from. I said I was going to leave it. I'm going to come back for a moment. <laughs> Be careful who you let counsel you. Be careful the who you let speak into your life. Be careful who you tell your problems to. Because not everybody wants to see you succeed. Some people want to see you fail. And listen, you make sure that the people that are sowing into your life are good godly people. That give you good godly counsel. And you know what? And I've told people this for years too. Sometimes you don't need to say anything. You just need to listen. Not everybody needs you to answer all the life's problems. Man, listen. I, because I, I, I want people. Listen. I want people to be successful. And I want them to win in life. And I got to know that what I'm telling them. Is going to help them win. Right? So be careful who you let speak into your life. All right.
Everybody still awake? All right, now listen to this. <clears throat> Eagles spend very little time on the ground. Now, this is amazing. They're not walking around like a chicken or a turkey. They're sitting high above. Come on. And they're, 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 or they're soaring. Why? Because, see, they don't want to be down in this, in that realm, in the, down around the ground. They want to be up high. They want to be soaring. Listen, I believe this, and I'm going to say this, and then, and, and, you know, we've got to get to the place where we want to get up high with God. Where our heart and our drive is to be closer to God and where we want to soar with God. I want to soar with God. I don't, I don't, listen, there's nothing down here that I need. You know, I know my flesh wants some of it, but, but as far as, you know, in life, there's so much more in the kingdom of God. There's so much more to the kingdom of God, and I want to be with God. I want to draw closer to God all the time. Every day of my life, I need to be striving to be more like God, but I got to get, get, get out of this mess. Come on, there's too much mess down here. I live here, and I know I'm in the world, but I'm not of this world. I'm, I'm kingdom. I'm part of a kingdom. I live in the United States, but I'm part of a kingdom. I live in Texas, but Texas is part of the United States. The United States is part of the world, but I'm part of the kingdom of God. And I don't want to get caught up down here and get trapped and snared and all this stuff down here. Come on. Listen, and I know don't and nobody say anything, but we get caught up in politics and we get up in this and we get caught up in that. And the next thing you know, we're divided against one another and we're angry at that person and they're mad at us and everybody's frustrated and everybody's this or that or the other thing. That's when we get too much, we spend too much time dwelling down in this arena. That's when our mind and our thoughts and our heart is, is getting tied to too many things things down in this area down here see the eagle doesn't spend too much time down here the only time he comes down here is to get his food and then he goes back up high come on he comes down he gets his rabbit or his rat or whatever and up he goes why he doesn't want to get trapped and snared down here he's not interested in some of this stuff going on down here and listen we need to get we need to get to that place where our greatest desire is to be up with God where this other stuff, when somebody says, what do you think about politics? I don't. <laughs> now listen, I vote, I research, I do all of that. But here's what I had to learn. I had to learn to keep my heart out of it. Watch this. Stay with the word. I'm looking for the person who's closest to the word. And that way I don't have to get all frustrated and angry. Because all I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the candidates and see who's closest to the word of God and that's who I vote for. I don't care what party they're from and I don't care what county they're from. Who's closest to the word of God? Now why do you say that? Because see, otherwise I get my heart entangled. And, and, and it can be any arena down here. We get too entangled. We spend too much time connected to all this stuff down here. And God's saying, I need you to come up higher because I got something higher for you. I got a greater purpose for your life, but you're too, you're too caught up. You're too tangled up with all this stuff down here. Come up higher. Come up higher. Come up higher. Come up higher where I am. Let me bring you up higher. Come on, mount up with wings as eagles. And come on up here where I am because I've got something born of the Spirit that I need you to be more connected to. But we get connected down here and we get involved in all this stuff. Listen, I'm, I'm for good causes and all of that. But my heart, my main thing for my heart is to be close to God and to be so close to God that I can feel His heartbeat. I want to know Him. Come on, I want to know Him. I want to know Him. See, when I first, let me tell you, can I tell you a story? I'm going to do it anyway. But... When I was young, and I came, you know, I was a preacher's kid, and I ran from God, acted a fool. Come on. And, and, and so, long story short, we'll skip all the foolishness. 
But I ran from God, acted a fool. And there was a time when, when I came back to God. Now, when I came back to God, I had some stuff. I had some stuff. I had some pride. I had some arrogance. Come on. I was full of me. I was so full of me that even when I started preaching, I was still full of, I had this thing that I was still connected to me. And so I, I would preach prancing around like a peacock. Come on. Instead of soaring like an eagle. Because I wanted everybody to see my feathers. I was more interested in my presentation than my revelation. See, it's okay. I can talk about me. Because you can't get mad at me. And I remember one time, Brother Jerry, my dad was my pastor. And I, I was so full of, I wanted to be like Pastor Parsley, my hero. And I'd been watching DVDs and CD, listening to CDs, and I think I've told this story before. If I have and you've heard it, just hang in there. We'll get on. But I was so into this presentation that I would, I would wipe the mic just like he did. Come on. I was preaching hard, and I'd go. And I preached the whole service like that. I did. I preached the whole service. <laughs> and that afternoon, me and my parents and, and my family, we all went to lunch. And my dad looked at me and he goes, what was that? <laughs> he said, what were you doing? Because, see, I was into my presentation more than the revelation. I was moving more with my gifting than his anointing. Because I was too connected down here to this stuff here. Come on. And to this, even though Pastor Parsley's a wonderful preacher, a great man of God, and I love his preaching, even to this day. My wife got in the car tonight, and that's the first thing that came on. But I let myself get into the carnal because I was still too connected to all of this stuff. Even though it was good stuff. His preaching was good, his messages were good, his revelation was good. All of that was good. But what I was doing was I was doing something that was carnal and it was more, it, it was more fleshly than it was spirit because I hadn't learned how to soar. I hadn't learned how to wait on God and let him anoint me to preach that message. Let him anoint me to speak that scripture, to speak that word, so that when it came out, it came out as the oracle of God, not the word of me. Because the goal was to get people's lives changed, not for them to think that I was a good preacher. And so, and, and so I have to, listen, and all of us go through it at different stages. We have to disconnect maybe from some more stuff. Come on, the longer we walk with God, there might be some more stuff. And God says you're going to have to disconnect from that because that thing's becoming a weight or an anchor to you. You're going to have to, you, you may have to disconnect. You may have to slow down on that. You may have to pull away from that. Why? Because it's keeping you from going higher and it's keeping you from soaring with me and it's keeping you down in a realm that's full of death and destruction and all of this other stuff. And you've got to get up higher because from there you're going to be able to see Come on, from there you're going to be able to have greater vision. 
From there, you're going to have greater endurance, but you got to come up here. I can't leave you down here like I found you. I got to get you up here where you're closer so I can show you things to come, and I can show you how to succeed, and I can show you how to win, and I can show you how to prosper, and I can give you a word of revelation, and I can sow into your life, and I can see you change the world. Got to come up higher. Look at your neighbor and say, come on up. Because listen to this, because I've spent this whole time getting right here. I've spent this whole time to get right here. An eagle can soar at, at, at up to 10,000 feet in the air. Right? But, but, he can't soar without the wind. He cannot soar without the wind. We will never soar unless we learn how to tap in to the wind. We will never be the people that we want to be or that we need to be until we learn how to tap in to the wind. Because let me tell you something. When you learn how to tap into the wind, oh, you'll become some other kind of something. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, when you get full of the wind of the Holy Ghost, we saw it and we heard about it last night. When you get full of the Holy Ghost and you get tapped into that wind of God, come on, the Holy Ghost is not a wind, but the Bible describes Him like a wind. And I'm telling you tonight, when we tap into the wind of the Spirit, when we tap into the wind of the Holy Ghost, He'll take us to places we have not been. He'll show us things we could not have seen. He'll tell us things we could not have known. He'll give us revelation that no man could have shared. He'll bring things out of the word that we never would have seen on our own, that we couldn't have heard in the greatest classrooms that have ever been. He will show us and reveal things to us. He will build us. He will strengthen us. He will carry us. He will take us higher and we'll see the lame walk and we'll see the blind healed and we'll see the deaf ears open and we'll see the dead raised a life and we'll see those things come to pass not because of my talent not because of my gifting but because I've tapped into the wind It's time for us as believers to get tapped into the wind of the Holy Ghost. Come on, some churches and people have put the wind in the back room. They put him on Sunday night. They put him to Wednesday night. They put him and tucked him away. But I came to tell you, the heavens are being rent. The heavens are being opened. And it's time for us to get back in the wind. It's time for the church to get tapped into the wind again where the Holy Ghost is leading our services, where the Holy Ghost is telling us what to do, where the Holy Ghost is telling us what to say, where we won't move unless He says move, and we won't go unless He says go. Come on, church, stand on your feet right now and give Him glory. Come on, give Him glory like you mean it. Come on, there's a wind that is blowing. There's the wind of the Holy Ghost that is blowing. Come on, it's blowing for us. Come on, he's blowing for us. Oh, my God. You want to know something? The interesting thing about him soaring, the eagle is the only bird that goes into the storm. While other birds are hiding, the eagle turns his face into the storm. And he turns his face into that thing and he catches the wind. And he lets that wind take him up above the clouds, above the lightning, above the thunder. And he soars and he looks down upon that thing. Oh, come on, are you listening to me? 
See, there's some of us tonight, we need to turn our face towards the storm and stop running from the storm so that we can speak to the storm and then fly above the storm and see that thing under our feet. I don't know about you. Maybe it's just me. But I've had some storms in my life and I didn't soar. And I've had some storms in my life where I didn't turn and face the storm. I tried to maneuver and outmaneuver the storm. And by trying to outmaneuver the storm, all I did was prolong the storm. Because I never dealt with the storm. I never turned to that storm and said, I'm going to face you head on. Because you know what? Because my God said... That when I get faint or when I get weary, that he's going to be my strength. And he's going to come alongside of me, Storm. See, you can't last, Storm. You've got a limited time frame. Your time frame in my life is limited. And so I'm not going to run from you. I'm not going to hide from you. But I'm going to turn and look you dead in your eye, Storm. And I'm going to call you what you are. I'm going to call you of the devil. I'm going to call you defeated. I'm going to call you under my feet. I'm going to demand that you leave and dissipate and that the sun is going to shine again. I have never forgotten the, one of the first times I ever flew. I was flying out of Cleveland, Ohio, and it was cloudy and, and, and everything, and, and the, that plane began to fly. And I wasn't even living for God at the time, but it's always, but it's still... It still is in my heart because as that plane began to climb, it went through the clouds. And as it got on the other side of those clouds, I could see the sun shining. And I've never forgotten that image. And I've kept that image all these years. 27 years later, I still remember going above the clouds. And you know what? When we learn that, you know what? My God is more than enough. My God is great. And my God is faithful. And when the storm comes, the Bible says, there, it never says that there won't be a weapon formed against me. It just says that it can't prosper. There will be storms formed. But that doesn't mean they get to prosper. Because you know what? I'm going to learn how to turn and look at my storm. And I'm going to say, you know what? I'm not, a, I'm not a buzzard. I'm not a chicken or a turkey. I'm not a peacock either. I'm an eagle. And I was made to soar. I was made to soar above the storm. I was made to climb. I just want to share real quickly as he's doing this. You know, there's so many fascinating things about the eagles, but if an eagle ever gets sick or gets to where it's feeling uh, down or whatever it is, it'll find the highest place that it can come to. And it will stand, it, it will get to that highest peak that it can find. And it will lay down on its back and it will stretch out its wings. And an eagle has many different lenses and there's a specific lens that it can set its eyes on the sun. And it will get there at the, in, in the morning. And it will begin to watch that sun. And by the time the sun sets, that eagle is healed. So if you're wondering, how do I get back to that height again? Find a place. Outstretch your wings and say, God, I'm looking unto you. I'm looking unto you. And I'm waiting on you to heal this, to heal me, whatever I need so that I can soar once again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe that tonight in this building there are those that would say, you know what, I haven't been soaring. I've been wounded. I've been hurt. I may be struggling. The world looks big. The problems look even bigger. But I want to soar. I want to soar. And if that's you tonight, and we won't 
I don't want to drag this out, you know, just for the sake of doing something. I believe that there are those of you that this, that it's something has ministered to you and spoken to your life. And if you're here, I just want you to come and we want to agree with you that after tonight, you're going to spread your wings and fly. And you're going to see God take you to heights that you've never been to before. And you're going to see God do things in your life that you've, you never could have expected or thought was possible. Y'all come on and come. So if you're here, I just want you to come. Don't wait for, don't, don't wait for somebody else. Just come. Because you see, the Word gives us a promise. The Word gives us, gives us hope. The Word gives us so many things. And, and, and tonight, I want you to know that you can soar again. That you can soar with God. I want to soar. I want to fly high. And as they come, you say, well, Pastor, that's not me, or Bobby, that's not me. Then here's what I want you to do. If you're sitting out here, then what I'm asking for you to do is stay involved in the Spirit. And you pray for these. And you pray for everybody that's up here. And you, you begin to believe God with them. And let's attach our faith. Let's join faith right now. Come on, church. Begin to pray. This is somebody's son. This is somebody's daughter. This is somebody's husband. This is somebody's wife. This is somebody's family right here. Represented in this altar. And I believe, I believe that it's our place. Because one thing we didn't talk about tonight, but I'm going to share it right now. The interesting thing about eagles is they're one of the most caring parents of all the animals. They spend more, they give their, their, uh, the baby eagles more love and more attention in, in raising them than almost any animal in the animal kingdom. So some of you, we may look at it and say, you know what, I'm an I'm a adult eagle. Well, then guess what? Now we're going to show and exhibit that same love and care for those that are here. Come on, are you listening to me? Come on, begin to pray. Come on, everybody praying. We're going to move through quickly. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on. Worship the Lord. Believe God. Pray with us. Hallelujah.
you. Some of you may have seen it. Some of you may not. But there was a picture that was circulated. It circulated on the internet. It circulated, you know, on Facebook and different things. And it was a picture of an eagle. And that eagle had come down and grabbed a snake. And it took that snake and it lifted it up off the ground. And it carried it into the air. And the point of that picture was that the eagle doesn't fight the snake on the ground in the snake's domain. Come on, somebody. You got to catch that. You see, I'm not going to fight the snake on his territory in his domain. See, the, this in this life, I'm not fighting him with flesh. The Bible says we don't fight against flesh and blood. Oh, my God. See, I'm not going to fight me a snake on the ground where he has the opportunity to bite. I'm going to carry him into the realm of the Spirit. I'm going to carry him up. Oh, my God. I'm going to carry him up into the realm of the Spirit. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tear his head off. So some of you tonight, that's a word in itself. Don't try to deal with the snake on his ground. Take him up. Grab him by the neck. And take him up into the realm of the spirit. He has no power there. He has no ability there. See, that's where I win every time. In the realm of the Spirit, I win every time. So some of you have been dealing with a snake. Maybe it's poverty, sickness, defeat, failure, depression, discouragement. Grab your snake. And let's take him on the wind of the Holy Ghost. And let's take him up into the realm of the Spirit. And let's beat his lights out. Come on, somebody. Give him glory tonight. Come on, I think you ought to give him glory tonight. 